Hi, Gavin from the bottom of the heap here. And in a first in a new series of videos that I'm going to be bringing to the channel, I want to take a look at some of the functions in the packages that I work with and that I've been developing over the last few years. And the first function that we're going to be looking at is one in my Gratia package for working with GAMS. And we're going to look at this function, conditional values. So conditional values is a new function in version 0.10 of Gratia, and it was designed to be a quick way to visualize the effects of, um, of a covariate on the response. So we're going to be using a particular example here using some chick weight, weight data. And uh, to follow along with this, you're going to need the MGCV package for fitting GAMS, obviously Gratia, and then you'll need the dplyr and ggplot uh, packages too. In this uh, example data that comes with, uh, with the R software, we're going to be looking at uh, this chick weight data set that contains 578 observations of chick weights. And it was a data set from an experiment into the effect of diet on early growth of chicks. So we load the chick weight data, and then it's not very um, tidy, so we're just going to do a little tidy, and we're going to turn it into a tibble, and then we clean up the names. One of the names is uppercase, and uh, we want to get rid of that. Uh, and so if you have a look at these uh, data, then we see we have um, the weight variable, so that is the weight of each of the chicks measured at each of the observation points. We have time. Uh, this is the, um, the time, so zero is the start of the, of the experiment, and then they uh, were measured at two weeks, four weeks, and so on. Um, then we have a, a factor for the chicks, and we also have a, a factor for the diet, and the chicks were fed one of four different diets. And so we're going to try and model the different growth weights on the different diets, as well as modeling the growth weights of the individual chicks. And this is what the data uh, look like. And as you can see, we might see some sort of nonlinear patterns. There's obviously variability among the diets um, and among the chicks, um, but most of, a lot of the variability seems to be among the chicks. But we're going to see, you know, what are the effects of the different diets on the growth weight, uh, the growth rate of these chi uh, chicks. So we're going to fit a, a GAM. Um, we are fitting the, uh, the weight uh, of the, um, so that's our response variable. We need to model the, um, the, the average weight of, each of the uh, chicks on each of the diets. So we put the group effects of our treatment in here. And then we have to do that because we're using a factor by smooth. So we're also including a smooth here for each, uh, a smooth of time for each of the four diets. And we're keeping them relatively simple. I'm just using, um, well, setting k to be five, so there'll be four basis functions here for this smooth. And then in the uh, next line of the formula, we are going to be modeling each of the chicks' growth curves themselves using this random factor smooth uh, basis. And again, we're keeping these relatively simple, and we're just going to use five basis functions uh, for each of the chicks. Uh, we tell it where the data come from. This model takes a little bit of time to fit because we're assuming that the observations are conditionally distributed Tweedy. Um, Tweedy is a, a, an interesting distribution. It essentially allows for things like a, a zero, but it also scales a bit like the gamma, and we can have models that are in between a Poisson and a gamma. Um, so it's a really interesting distribution, and we're just doing this because it scales a little bit, the, the variant scales a little bit lower than it would do with the variant, uh, with the gamma in this model. Now because it fits a little bit slower, a little bit harder, to, we're doing lots of estimating of smooths in here, we're going to use the fremel function, or the fremel smoothness selection, with the BAM uh, fitting function, right, so for the big additive model. If we do that, and then obviously one of the first things that you want to do when you visualize, or also when you've estimated your GAM, you want to visualize it. And so to do that, we need to go through a few steps. So if we want to visualize what is the effect of diet across time uh, that's been estimated by the model, we need to um, remove the growth rates of the individual chicks. We need to exclude that variability. So we use the smooths function from Gratia to get a list of smooths just so that we can refer to them by the, their name as far as MGCV is concerned. In the next line here, we're creating a data slice where we are getting 100 observations evenly spaced over time and then we're getting a, a value evenly spread over the diet. So what that means for a factor is that we're going to get each diet um, in the prediction data. So we'll have the time values that we're predicting at repeated for each diet. 
Then we use the fitted values function in Gratia. We exclude the um, chick uh, factor smooths at times. So we remove the chick specific growth rates. But there, so now we're modeling the um, smooths for the different diets or we're, we're showing the, the smooths for the different diets. And then a little bit of ggplot here to, um, to, to visualize that. And we're mapping the time variable to the x-axis, the fitted values from the model uh, to the y-axis. We're grouping them by diet so that we get a nice a line for each of them. We plot the credible interval, setting the upper and lower confidence intervals to the upper and lower margins of the ribbon. And we want to color them by diet, so we use the fill here. And then we add on the, uh, the fitted smooth itself and a little bit of a nice label on the y-axis. So these are all things that we might like to do if we're just visualizing the, um, the fitted model. And this is what it looks like using the default um, uh, discrete palette. Um, we get a nice plot and we can start to understand a little bit about how the, the diets might be affecting the weights of the chicks on average. <clears throat> Now, the problem with that is that it's not exactly quick, even though Gratia's data slice and the fitted values uh, uh, functions make that visualization or getting the data ready for the visualization sort of relatively quick, we still need to write out that plotting code from ggplot. And we also have to remember the names that Gratia gave to the computed variables, and those haven't remained fixed over the life of Gratia. In fact, one of the recent versions, we actually updated them so that they had a dot in front of them so that they didn't clash with any of the variable names that users might have, uh, have in their data. Um, so you have to remember a lot of these things and it's a lot of tedious code to write out. And if you're doing this a lot, like I am, then you don't really want to be writing out that ggplot code all the time. And that's where conditional values comes in. <clears throat> we can get exactly the same plot by using the conditional values function we have to tell it which variables we want to condition on. And so our main variable that we're conditioning on is time, but we also want to condition on diet too so that we get a, a curve for each of the diets. And as before, we are going to exclude the chick specific growth curve. So we remove that effect when we're visualizing. So we're only looking at the, um, the average diet effect over time. And then the conditional values actually returns a tibble um, that we, a data frame that we can um, do whatever we might want with it, but there is a specific draw method in Gratia that will plot the, um, the, the tibble, the data for us, so we can see the conditional values straight away. And if we do that, this is the plot we get. And apart from the fact that the function is using a different discrete palette, here we're using the Akabi Ito uh, palette rather than the inbuilt ggplot um, discrete palette, uh, the plot looks exactly the same. And, and it's doing exactly the same thing under the hood. <clears throat> so let's just go through some of the main features. Um, it automates this data, the, the, the sort of data slice and fitted value steps. You just need to specify the variables you want to condition on. And you can condition on up to four different variables at the moment. The first variable gets mapped to the x-axis. So that's the sort of main variable that we're conditioning on. The second variable will be mapped to the color channel as we saw here with diet. And then if you specify a third variable, that will be mapped to the facet wrap um, channels. So we will get a, a string of uh, small multiple plots. And then if you use uh, four variables, instead of using facet wrap, the third variable will be mapped to uh, the rows and the fourth variable will be wrap map, uh, mapped to the columns of a facet grid. Now the function has been shamelessly um, modeled on plot predictions from the excellent marginal effects package. And um, the only real difference is that the uh, conditional values is much simpler than this plot predictions uh, function. Plot predictions in marginal effects can do many more things, but I just wanted a very simple function here that would allow us to visualize outputs from GANs. So where we're going to go next with this function, well, right now, it's in a very basic form. It was just introduced in the latest version of Gratia, but we plan, I plan to improve upon that over time. Uh, I want to make it a true replacement for MGCV's viz.gam function. I think that's one of the main functions in MGCV, that, uh, at least visual functions in MGCV, that Gratia doesn't already um, provide a, a ggplot or tidy replacement for. And to make it a true replacement for viz.gam, we're going to need to handle two main covariates. So rather than mapping the fitted values to the y-axis, 
we might map um, another variable, another covariate to the y-axis, and then we'll want to represent a surface. And this is useful for things like the tensor product smooths, where we're modeling smooth interactions between variables. We also want to make uh, uh, conditional values more robust to user data. Um, that for example, there's a bug in the version on CRAN at the moment where with variable names that are also function names, then you'll get an error because it picks up the function rather than the variable first. And of course, we want to make the plot a little bit more customizable. Right now, the use of the Okabe-Ito scale is essentially hard-coded. I want to make some of these things a little bit more user-friendly for people. So thank you for watching. If you're um, interested in this series and finding out a little bit more about what um, is new and what, um, what the features are in, in my packages like Gratia, then this is going to be one of a, hopefully a series of videos. So if you want to get a notification or a reminder when the next video comes up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Just click the button below. And if you want to get a notification, make sure you hit the bell. Well, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.